What's going on, y'all? Hope everybody's doing good. All right, so today we're going to be animating mid journey images in Kling AI, and we're going to be using the motion brush. This is what we're going to be working on today. All right, let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is grab an image. We need to import it into Kling AI. What we need to do is go down to the motion brush, click on that, and wait for Kling AI to analyze the image in order to use the auto segmentation so that we can automatically select parts of the image. What we can do after that is click on the auto segmentation feature and start selecting the areas that we want to animate. So here I'm selecting this old lady's face and I'm just adding the ears in. And then once I get the, the part that I want to animate, I'm going to erase the bottom of her neck. I'm also painting in over her forehead, painting in more areas of the woman's face. The plan is to make her look down as the rocks are falling. And once I finish drawing over her face, I'm going to click on the track one button and I'm going to draw an arrow going down. It's going to tell Kling to animate her face moving down. And I still don't know how this technology works, but it's incredible. And then I'm going to go into area two, click on auto segmentation. And I'm just going to draw on that first debris. And I'm going to click on track two and I'm just going to draw an arrow downward and I'm going to do that for the rest of the debris. Once I click on confirm, you have the option to write a prompt or leave the prompt box empty. Sometimes it works with the prompt and sometimes it doesn't. I think Kling AI is smart enough to understand what you want these objects to do. I'm going to render off two generations at once just to see what Kling AI does. Oh my God. Wow. Man, they look amazing. I look, man, I don't know how the heck these AI video generators do this, but this is magic. It analyzed the image and it knew that this woman was frightened, right? It maintained the expression on this woman's face. So as she's looking down, she's like, kind of like, check out the wrinkles on her neck. It just, it did an amazing job. So I'm going to import another image. This time around, it's an image of an old lady standing, looking up at a whole bunch of buildings. And we're gonna run the same process. Click on motion brush, wait for Kling AI to analyze the image, click on auto segmentation, and start drawing on these buildings. Sometimes it leaves holes in the image, so you would have to either go in there and brush those little areas back in, or continue to use the auto segmentation feature to fill those little windows in. I'm gonna click on track one, and then I'm gonna draw an arrow moving upward. And then I'm going to go to area two and use the auto segmentation, draw on the building, also draw on the little windows, click on track two, draw an arrow moving upward. And I'm going to do this for the rest of the buildings. And in this case, the holes were so small. I, I think they need to add a zoom feature because if I can be able to zoom into these images and brush over those little holes, it'll be an easier process. But in this case, I have to go back and use the brush in order to draw over those holes. The thing is, you want these buildings to animate at different speeds. That's why there's certain arrows that move farther up. There's certain arrows that move a little bit up. There's certain arrows that move medium way up. So think about that whenever you're using the motion brush and Kling AI. So after I finished, I clicked on confirm in order for not to wait. I usually render out two videos at a time. And then here I can choose to either add a prompt or let Kling AI do its thing. As I clicked on two videos and then I just clicked on generate. All right. So Kling AI did a great job at animating these buildings. Look at that. You see these buildings that animating upward at different speeds. 
which is exactly what I wanted. Kling AI understood what the environment was and it was able to inject animation in the old lady, the camera movement, and also the buildings. Because a lot of times it's just hard to prompt in, hey, can you make these buildings move up? Hey, the buildings ascend slowly into the sky. I tried that in all the other AI video generators and they didn't understand the assignment. Thanks for explaining that, Steve. So now we're back in After Effects and what I'm gonna do is add an adjustment layer, label it Final Touches. Then I'm gonna add a grain effect to it. Go down to the Preview dropdown and click on Final Output. Then go to the Presets and click on the second preset. Then I'm gonna bump up the size to 1.2 and bump down the intensity to 0.72. All right, cool. I think that looks good. It's subtle enough. You want to feel the green. You don't want to see the green. Then after that, I'm going to add the quick chromatic aberration too. And I'm going to mess around with the position to get the right amount of aberration that I want. I don't want this to be overwhelming. I want it to be enough to distort the colors of the footage, but not enough for the viewer to see the aberration. I messed around with the position and I bumped it up to 0.7 and they gave us enough chromatic aberration just to add a little bit of organicness to the footage. And then after that, I'm gonna play the footage over and over and over to see if it looks good. And then we move on to the next shot. All right, so moving on to the second shot. If you notice, this shot has a, like a reddish tone to it. And what I'm gonna do is add a curves layer to it and I'm gonna go to the red channel and bump down the red a little bit just to remove some of that red cast over the footage. And then once we do this, we keep on going back and forth between the first uh, piece of footage and this piece of footage that we're trying to correct. Keep on messing around with that red, bumping it down to try to get the, the right blue values in there. And once I get to the point where it looks decent, I'm gonna go to the blue channel and start bumping up the blue channel to match that first piece of footage. And then we continue playing it in the timeline to see if both of them match. Now it's not gonna be a perfect match because this is all mathematics. So I'm trying to get it to look as close as possible so that there's nothing jarring, there's nothing that jumps out. All right, I think that looks good. Let's move on to the next shot. So in this third shot, if you notice, it's kind of brownish and reddish. So what we're gonna do is attack it the same way we did with the other shots. We're gonna go to the red channel and we're gonna bump down the mids to get rid of some of that red in there. All right, there you go. Just bumping down those reds a bit in the mid tones. Then we're gonna go to the blue channel and we're gonna start bumping up the blues in the mid area of the footage just to get some of that blue in there. There you go. And this is a, a dance between the red channel and the blue channel just to get the right balance. Go back to the red channel, mess around with that more, massage it a little bit more, and then bring down the reds in the highlights because there was a lot of red in the buildings. So I wanted to eliminate some of that red in the highlight area in the buildings. There you go. Messing around with that, going back to the blue channel, bumping up the blue in the mids a little bit, and then bumping up the blue in the highlights a bit, just to match that footage of the old lady. There you go. Just messing around with both those channels, just try to get the right balance. There you go. And now what we're gonna do is add an unsharpened mask effect and bump it up to 100 because I noticed that the footage was a little bit blurry and soft. And then what we're gonna do is go back to the RGB channel and bump up the black slightly in order for the black areas to match the black areas of the shot with the old lady. All right. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a slight little zoom on this piece of footage just to add a little bit of 
drama to it. So as the building is rising, it's kind of scaling up slightly. And then we're just going to compare the shots and see if they both look good together. All right. And I think they look good together. Now on to the next shot. All right. So in this final shot, we're a little bit on the green side. So we're going to add a curves effect to this layer. Then we're going to go down to the green channel. We're going to click in the middle just to make sure that that point doesn't move. And then we're going to take some of that green off in the highlights. Right. Just massage these little points. When we take out green on the highlights, it starts adding a little bit of magenta in there. So we go to the blue channel and we start bumping up the blue channel in the mids. Right. So that we can start adding that blue in there. Then we go to the red channel and we start taking some of that red out of the mids. And then we take some reds out of the highlights. Right. That's in order to so that we can get a, a blue cast to this piece of footage. So then we go back to the green channel and we bring some of that green back into the highlights just so that we can get some of that blue in there. Right. There you go. And then we compare the shots to make sure that they feel like they're living in the same world. There you go. I added some more green back into the highlights. So they match the green highlights of the woman shot. Then go back into the blue channel and start massaging those blues to make sure that we get the right amount of blue in this shot. There you go. There you go. And then we compare all shots to make sure that they all feel cohesive. Here you go. And I think they all look good together. So in this step, I had to conform all of the pieces of footage to 24 frames per second, because some of these pieces of footage I had to speed up, slow down. So what I did was I added a new adjustment layer and I named it 24 FPS. Then I added a posterized time effect to it and I kept it at its default which is 24 frames per second. I squeeze some of these pieces of footage to make them faster. And then in the frame blend mode option, I clicked on the frame blend option twice so that each piece of footage is smooth. So now when they play underneath the 24 FPS posterized time effect, they still conform to uh, 24 frames per second. So here are all the shots together. They may not be perfect, but I think all of them match. As long as it's not jarring, it's going to look decent. And then this is a version without the color correction. So you can see the before and after. Without the color correction, you got a whole bunch of shots that kind of live in the same world, but don't have the same color. So that's how you use Kling Motion Brush and After Effects to create a film that feels cohesive so i hope you guys got a lot out of this tutorial on to the next one peace